Hello and welcome to Maths Whenever. In this video, we're going to derive the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle. An equilateral triangle is a three-sided regular polygon with three equal side lengths and three interior angles of 60 degrees. Knowing only the three side lengths and not the height of an equilateral triangle means that we cannot use the familiar triangle area formula. Area equals half times base times height or a equals half bh. So what do we do? Step 1. Use Pythagoras' theorem to find the simplified expression for the height h. You're probably thinking, how can we use Pythagoras' theorem since it only relates to right angled triangles and here we have an equilateral triangle? By splitting the equilateral triangle in half from the base to the apex, we create two right angled triangles. Step 2. Substitute b equals l and the simplified expression for h into the familiar formula area equals half times base times height and simplify. Let's begin. First, let's review Pythagoras' theorem. We begin with a right angled triangle with side lengths a, b and c. Pythagoras' theorem then states that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or simply, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. The hypotenuse is the longest side and is opposite the right angle. Applying Pythagoras' theorem to the equilateral triangle, we have h squared plus l divided by 2 all squared equals l squared. We now solve for h in terms of l in simplified form using algebra. First, we subtract l divided by 2 all squared from both sides. Simplify the left hand side because l divided by 2 all squared minus itself equals 0. We now take the square root of both sides. Note that the plus or minus symbol is not required here because h and l are greater than 0 as they are lengths. Now simplify the left hand side because the square root of h squared equals h. We now have an expression for h which is the square root of l squared minus l divided by 2 all squared. We now proceed to simplify this expression in order to substitute it into the familiar triangle area formula. Area equals half times base times height. First, we expand the brackets of the fraction using the laws of indices. Doing this makes the fraction l squared divided by 4. Then, re-express the term l squared as a fraction with a common denominator of 4. This makes the first fraction 4l squared divided by 4. We can now combine the two fractions. Now the numerator under the radical is 4l squared minus l squared. Subtracting the two terms of the numerator simplifies the numerator to 3l squared. Now we split the radical across the numerator and the denominator. We then split the radical across the numerator and simplify the denominator. We can now simplify the L term because the square root of L squared equals L. We now have the simplified expression for the height of the equilateral triangle in terms of the side length L. Now we can substitute b equals l and h equals root 3l divided by 2 into the area formula area equals half bh. Therefore, the formula area equals half bh becomes area equals a half l times root 3l divided by 2 in brackets. Next, re-express a half l as l divided by 2. We now have Area equals L divided by 2 times root 3L divided by 2. Finally, multiply the two fractions as follows. Area equals L times root 3 times L divided by 2 times 2, which becomes Area equals root 3 times L squared divided by 4. Or Area equals root 3 divided by 4 times L squared. And there we have it, the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle. As a final note and challenge, this formula can also be derived using the following independent methods. The sine ratio of 60 degrees, the cosine ratio of 30 degrees, 
the tangent ratio of 30 degrees, the tangent ratio of 60 degrees, the formula area equals half AB sine C, where two side lengths and the included angle are known, as is the case for an equilateral triangle. And finally, Heron's formula for the area of a triangle. All these different derivations demonstrate the internal consistency of the rules of mathematics. The ability to do these derivations is a good test of your algebra and trigonometry skills. Give these derivations a go. You will feel a sense of achievement. If you like this video, then please like, share, subscribe and add a comment. You can also check out more videos at Maths Whenever on YouTube. And for a collection of other mathematical stuff, follow iFiePi on Instagram, where i is the imaginary unit, phi is the golden ratio, e is the exponential function, and pi is the ratio of a circle circumference to its diameter. Thanks for watching and see you next time.